Ford recently announced that the Shelby GT350 and GT350R would not be continued for the 2021 model year. Here's why it's not really a big deal. So it's been pretty widely known that it would end after the 2020 model year, especially after they released the Heritage Edition models, which were a nice way to wrap up the production run of the GT350s. And the other thing is the Ford lineup now has two other higher performance, more special Mustangs. You have the very, very high performance GT500 now with the supercharged V8 making 760 horsepower. And you have the new Mach 1, which I haven't driven or even seen one yet, but kind of feels like a GT350 with a Coyote in it. So it's got so more of the track capability, a little bit more of the desirability, but not quite a Shelby. Regardless, they would have had three in the lineup and the GT350 being the first one that came out had kind of run its course. This is also why I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Now, wait, before we get any further, I love the 350. I, I own one. I decided to buy one. I tried to buy one years ago, but they wanted way too much markup. And now finally I have a 350R and I firmly believe it's one of the most engaging, fun, all around best sports cars you can spend your money on. Flat plane crank V8, the Voodoo V8 5.2 liter revs to 8,250 RPM, 526 horsepower, Tremec six speed manual only, also track focused. This car is just all about an amazing the drive experience. But here's why the cancellation I kind of expected and doesn't really feel like that big of a deal. The biggest thing to me is they built a lot of these. This car ran for five years. So the first year of GT350s was 2015 and it only sort of counts as the first year. I'll explain that in a moment. And all the way to 2020. That's five model years of 350s and the production numbers, which I'll go through in a second, also uh, reflect that. The first year of 15s, the reason I said it doesn't really count is there were very, very few cars built at all. They reviewed it at the auto show and they're like, all right, here's the first run. There were 100 regular GT350s that they split between track pack and tech pack and only 37 R's. Those cars were pretty much immediately just allocated straight to like the VIPs and stuff. So those are the most rare first year of the GT350. And then you go through the next couple of years. Here are some numbers that I just found online. In 2016, about 6,000 200 total are built, just under 6,200. 5,600 of that were 350s and 526 were R's. Going into the 2017 model year, 7,000 plus were made. 6,173 were regulars, 942 were R's. And then in 2018, my model year, less, 4,300, 4,378 was what I saw online. 3,745 regulars, 633 R's. 2019 and 2020 model year numbers are not officially announced yet, but I'm guessing probably somewhere around 3,000 based on what I'm seeing. And among those, about 600 are probably going to be a GT350 R. But if you total up that entire, essentially four-ish years of production, that's a lot of cars. That is over 23,000 GT350s built, which makes it not that rare. So one of the first things that happened as soon as the cancellation was announced, I got probably at least half a dozen people messaging me going, oh my God, did you see that the 350 was canceled? The value of your car is gonna skyrocket. It's gonna be a collector car. And I immediately said, well, one, no, cause a lot of us already knew that 2020 would be the last model year and they built too many. I don't think it's gonna be rare. I did not go into purchasing this car with any regard to it being a rare future collectible or even going up in value. If it just holds value, I'll be happy. And the reason I think that is 23,000 isn't like Toyota Camry levels of production quantity, but in the world of like rare-ish sports cars that are going to appreciate, that are truly special, it's not really there. You look at my Boss 302. Uh, the first car I ever bought myself was a Boss 302 Laguna Seca. That car only ran for two model years, 2012 and 2013, and just over 8,000 were made. They did nearly that production in just one year of GT350s, and only seven, about 750 a year were Laguna Seca. So that's a total production run of 1,500 cars, which is way more rare than the 350R and the 350 by far. So that's, I firmly do not believe that they will appreciate. The only possible chance of cars that will go up in value are gonna be those first 2015 model year cars, because I mean, 137 is definitely rare, first early VINs, and then possibly some heritage edition cars. They look really cool with like the Wimbledon white with the blue stripes. Um, they are very, very cool. I actually kind of want to have one, but they probably just cost way too much. Those might go up in value, but just your regular 350Rs, that's, I mean, people are tracking them, people are driving them, enjoying them, modifying them, boosting them. They're not going to become a collector car. But there are some things to consider. Um, 
The fact that they're being canceled also means this engine probably is not gonna live on anymore. This engine had some problems. I'm gonna film a whole separate other video talking about how reliable is a Shelby GT350. You hear all the rumors, the flat plane crank, a lot of NVH issues early on. Like I heard a bunch of stories back when I used to work at Ford and from other engineer friends who were on these programs. There were problems. Some of them had oil consumption issues. Some of them ended, new, ended up needing new motors. But this is a really crazy engine that I don't think they're ever going to make one like this ever again. Look at the GT500. They went back to a cross plane crank, supercharged, and it's dual clutch only. No more manual for the Shelby. We don't know what the future is going to lead to, so this is always going to be a truly special car. When it, I mean, so many magazines and other people reviewing it, owners have stated that this is one of the best sports cars ever made, the best driving cars in the last many, many years, and I absolutely love mine. So from that regard, it is kind of sad that it's going to be gone. I don't think there'll be a next generation 350 or 350R, and I do not think that they're going to do this powertrain again, which makes it special. Again, there's so many things you could talk about with what made the 350R special carbon fiber wheels when they first came out they were insanely expensive they're still pretty pricey but like three to four grand per wheel on a mustang to get carbon fiber wheels that's like four gt ferrari piece to level technology and equipment um otherwise that's the production numbers at the end of the day make it not a huge deal you want to go buy one right now you can go out look on the facebook groups look on cars.com wherever at various dealers there are still some brand new ones for sale extended warranty you just service at your four dealer you can just go buy one I firmly do not believe that the values are really going to go up, especially not long term. Too many of these cars were built. Buy one, drive and enjoy it. I can fully endorse and support purchasing one of these because that's the highest endorsement I can give. I decided to spend my own money and put one in my own garage. So I really can't give a car higher praise than that. I absolutely love this car. Going to keep making more videos with it. A couple more coming up. GT500 videos should be also coming soon. Um, it's going back to Michigan, but wanted to talk about it because I had a lot of people messaging me and commenting about, did you see they canceled the GT350? And the first thing I wanted to say was, yes, I've known that for a couple years. But the second thing was, it's not a huge deal because of these production numbers, over 23,000. I think I've talked about it enough. Five years of 350s, I know many owners. I am looking forward to driving the GT500. The Mach 1, eh, we'll see, I'll drive it, but I think I'll always like this car more. Otherwise, uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for more GT350 videos that are coming up. And as it get colder outside, we'll probably be filming minivan videos. I don't know. Thanks for watching, guys.